Hi, this is Teresa Pavlos, Editor-in-Chief of DrBicuspid.com. I am here with pharmacologist extraordinaire Tom Viola for another episode of Dental Dose. Thanks, Tom. Teresa, how are you today? So today I am good because we are talking about Prilocaine. It is the, the last local anesthetic in our local anesthetic series. Um, and it's been fun getting to talk about some of the pros and cons, the myths um, with all of the others. And so I'm really, I'm excited to learn about what makes Prilocaine special, why it's part of this whole batch that we have available. So I will say this up front, I like Prilocaine, but a lot of people don't even know it exists. A lot of offices don't carry Prilocaine uh, in their repertoire of local anesthetic agents. And I always found it kind of curious because when you look at prilocaine from a, you know, uh, two miles away, you say, wow, well, this anesthetic agent, it's also known as Sidonest, uh, that's brand name. Uh, when you look at it in from the two mile vantage point, you say, wow, this has got a lot of advantages. It's got a lot of things going for it. As a matter of fact, you could say that prilocaine has every advantage of every other anesthetic agent we just talked about in our series combined. Wow. All right, so, so it's got- a, a good one for last. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fully loaded, okay? Number one, let's start off with what? It's 4%. Whoa, okay, that packs a punch. A lot of molecules, right? That's what we've been talking about, right? And you can say 4%, that's like articaine. You'd be correct, okay. Then it's metabolized somewhat outside the liver, which is important, which is why we love articaine so much, right? Because articaine is metabolized in the bloodstream up to 95%. So you don't have to worry about liver function so much. Prilocaine, not as much outside the liver metabolism, but it is metabolized in other organs, like alternate sites would be like the liver, besides the liver would be like the lungs and the kidneys, okay? So it is metabolized somewhat outside the liver. Okay, well, I could say that's like articaine. All right, so that's two things like articaine so far, right? Yeah. We got we got more though. We got, oh, we got more. We got, we got more. Lidocaine, we've got some bupivacaine. So keep keep those benefits coming. All right, so bupivacaine's claim to fame was it was one of the anesthetic agents that was only available with the one to 200,000 epinephrine, which a lot of people feel is by, by far better than the one to 100,000 because it doesn't cause as much side effects. Okay. It's like half strength epinephrine. Guess what? Prilocaine is available with the one to 200,000 epinephrine dilution as well. So, hey, that's like bupivacaine. Yeah. Okay. Prilocaine is characterized as, as the only agent that I'm aware of that's available with epi and without. Oh, really? It comes with both? I didn't know that. It comes both ways. So, wait, that's like but pivocate. Yeah. Hmm. Available with and without epinephrine, which is pretty amazing. All right, let's knock lidocaine off its uh, high horse too. Why? Because lidocaine's claim to fame was what? It was category B, safer in pregnancy than some of the other anesthetic agents. Well, guess what? Prilocaine's category B too. So you could, that's like lidocaine. Right. So we've systematically dismantled all of the other anesthetic agents, big, <laughs> plug them all into one, right? So I, it's like I say to my students, if I walked out of the room and said to you, well, I'm gone, build the world's best anesthetic agent, I'd come back and you'd probably have Prilocaine because when you add up all the advantages of all the other anesthetic agents, you've got the best anesthetic agent, it seems, right? So, Prilocaine is perfect. It's like Goldilocks, right? It's it's the it's the perfect blend of everything, right? It's no is prilocaine it, is Cinderella. Is it newer? It's not like, new. No, no, it's been around it's, since the fifties, believe it or not. Nineteen fifty-four, I believe it was introduced. Yeah, or well, something like that. And it has all of the some of the things that make it great. I love that it's available with and without Epi, um, and it's the only one, which is surprising. And I think we're gonna find out maybe why, at least a little why it's not in every single dental office ever. All right, so here comes the but, right? Okay. So first of all, the onset's two to four minutes. It's not fast, but it's not slow either. It's no yeah. slouch, okay? So that's not bad. 
That's not a huge butt. That's a baby butt. That's a baby butt. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with prilocaine is that in high doses, uh, it can cause a condition known as methemoglobinemia. That is a very long name that I don't know what it means. So a you're going to have to break that down. A lot of letters. Yeah. Methemoglobinemia, which is where the hemoglobin in your red blood cells gets methylated or bound up and can no longer carry oxygen. And the patient would suffer hypoxia and potentially death. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. This, the, see, like the, the two to four minutes baby butt potentially dying is a much more problematic. Way bigger butt. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Kind of like mine, a way bigger butt. Like you would know. Now, okay. So if this happened, Viola, I would hear people passing away in dental offices all the time. Okay, well, number one, a lot of offices don't carry Prilocan. Some do. But the thing is, according to all the studies, you need to be dosing in greater than 600 milligrams. Now, if you said... Okay, Mr. Ms. Ms. Dental Professional, don't use more than 600 milligrams. The average dental professional would say, milligrams, cartridges, talk to me in cartridges. I don't yeah. know what milligrams are. So it works out to about a little over eight cartridges. As a patient, that sounds like a lot of cartridges. It does. As a matter of fact, the MRD, the maximum recommended dose of prilocaine is it's just about that same number, 600 milligrams. So most dental professionals wouldn't use that many cartridges anyway. So, you know, here's a, as I always say to my students and my audiences, here's a clue. If you need someone to help you carry all the cartridges you're going to use that day, it's probably a, not a good idea. Rethink your strategy, right? I love so, that. I mean, if you've got that many cartridges, yeah. maybe there's something wrong, right? Right. So, all right, then I'm not going to use eight cartridges. Well, so what's the alarm? What's the problem? Well, the thing is, because patients can be predisposed to methemoglobinemia, okay, they might already have methemoglobinemia. They were born with it, like a congenital condition. Okay, that's one thing. Um, what else? Maybe they have some type of anemia, uh, like not just uh, iron, let's say iron deficiency anemia so, or sickle cell, right? That's what I was thinking, yeah. Right? Well, maybe they have some form of hypoxia already, like congestive heart failure, COPD, even asthma, so COVID-19. So all, all of those things mean what? I'm, at this point, the patient is predisposed to some of the negative aspects of prilocaine. And so that's considered a relative contraindication. And maybe that's why a lot of dental, dental professionals, I can't speak for them, but maybe a lot of dental professionals are like, oh, I can't keep track of all that. I'll just use lidocaine. It's easier. And that's how Prilocaine became Cinderella. You know, good drug. Don't get me wrong. And I hope the people who make Cinderella aren't mad at me. I think it's a great drug. I love it. But I can see why it doesn't have the universal acceptance that some anesthetic agents have. And it makes me think back to our lidocaine episode where it, it works how you expect it to pretty much every time. Most patients can use it. It just, you don't have to think about it. Um, and so anything where you have to think a little bit more, you know, chances are you're not going to be using eight cartridges, but like, you know, really double checking to make sure, am I using, how much am I using? And, you know, does this patient, when was the last time they had their blood work done? Like, you know, maybe they have anemia and they don't know it, um, or something like that. And just maybe there's some hesitation there. Um, Great. Kind of understandable but at the same time you think about all of the benefits and so i mean who would be the kind of like dental professional then when you talk to people who do use prilocaine or offices that that have used it is there are these people that are maybe more in tune with like the scientific literature um or whatnot or is it just like they heard about it in school and they used it and they're like this is great and you know i'm not going to give patients eight cartridges so um i've had no bad experiences um is there a particular type of, of dental professional that seems more likely to use prilocaine i think prilocaine is best used um the way i understand it from having i mean i do all this this lecture on local anesthetics all the time it's three hours i go soup to nuts on everything there is to know about anesthetic including the chemistry and everything we talked about and invariably when i get to prilocaine and say okay you know how many people here have prilocaine in the office? And let's say there's like 500 people in the room. 
yeah maybe like 50 people raise their hand so it's like 10 percent of, of the audience typically not unheard of but right. still not like if you ask like how many of you have lidocaine in your office exactly you probably so, have every hand every hand up right so so it's you know it's it's there and yeah. so when i've approached them it's it's so you know you, i'll ask them you know you use phylicane tell me what you use it for and they'll usually say infiltration uh, okay. So, you, you know, you can use it via infiltration. You're not using a lot, right? And at 4%, uh, prilocaine is a darn good uh, agent to be using for infiltration because it packs a lot of molecules. And the fact is you can get it plain. So if there's any concerns with epinephrine, so as long as you're, you know, using it for procedures where the total volume you're using is not very large, you could probably get away with using prilocaine just fine. Provided, however, that you've taken the other precautions about whether the patient has anemia, hypoxia, and so on, because those don't go away no matter, just because you're using less volume. That makes so much sense. Um, and so just to follow up with one more question, we talked about carbocaine being plain, one of the only plain anesthetics. Could, you, if you wanted to, you know, carbocaine is short acting, if you needed to extend it, is prilocaine another thing for people for who can't, um, have epi something that they could work together with? Yep, I believe that a lot of uh, of the dental professionals that use uh, prilocaine may not just use it for infiltration. They may use it just as a regular agent because they're confident in their skills. They know they're not going to use that much. They've already pre-screened the patient for any kind of things that would predispose them to the effects, and so they use it like they would use lidocaine. But as you said, and, and well put, you know, it lasts longer than mepivacaine because it's plain. Uh, and it's stronger than lidocaine because it's lidocaine's two percent, prilocaine's four percent. So it's sort of it does fit the Goldilocks stuff finally where it belongs. Uh, you in the, in the hands of a, a, a practitioner that's skilled in using lower volumes and using them more effectively and efficiently. But you know, uh, it's 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 a great agent. But I can understand, as you said, why some really great practitioners don't want to deal with it because it just revolve, it revolves around too much thought. And, and there's so many other things to consider in a dental appointment besides that. They're going to reach for their lidocaine. <laughs> they know how it works. They know it works the same every time. Um, and you're right. They've got 5 million other things to think about. So it is what it is. That's so fascinating, though. Um, and that prilocaine has so many benefits. Um, and it's one I definitely didn't know as much about when I write about local anesthetics for stories. I think I've written about all the other ones we've talked about, but I've never written about prilocaine. Um, and so now I think I have a little bit better of understanding of why. Excellent. Well, glad I can help. <laughs> um, if you You're here for prilocaine. <laughs> prilocaine. Um, if you at home are watching and you are interested in local anesthetics, you can watch the videos we referenced. I'll put them in the related reading. Again, there's Articane. Bupivacaine, lidocaine, carbocaine, slash medpivacaine, and now prilocaine. Um, so the complete series is now done. So definitely go ahead and check those out if that's something you're interested in. And uh, Tom, thanks again for speaking with me. And I will see you on the next episode of Dental Deuce. Thanks, Teresa.